So over to you, Steve. Over to me. <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted to start off with uh, going back to video 20 that you just recorded. Uh, uh, that's the best one yet. Oh, thank and, you. <laughs> yeah, I just Ooh. felt that was like uh, your voice, your tone. It was the, it was like listening to an audio book. And it was very clear. And I finally figured out after 19 previous sessions that uh, what the what the lightning path is. <laughs> oh, I found out all, I found out I found out all I had to do I found out all I had to do was ask Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure it out uh, because I'm used to uh, the Buddha's path and uh, the eightfold path and the four noble truths so there's a path to follow right and so that got me off path with the lightning path in the sense i was trying to find okay what's the path to follow here but then when at i remember now at one hour and 15 minutes you say um that uh the reason I named the lightning path was because of the 260 moons to get to 84 year cycle of Uranus. And uh, that's the reason I named it the lightning path because Uranus is lightning and thunder and transformational and sudden transformation. Yep. And that's why I named it the lightning path, if anybody was wondering. And that just made me laugh. I started laughing out loud going, if anybody's wondering, I go, that sounds like he's talking to me. I don't and know. I just found that, I found that uh, uh, it was like, and there was kind of a, there was a tone in there. It's like, if anybody asks me what the lightning path is again, it was just like, this is it. Here it is. I got all oh, good. <laughs> now I got it. So that was uh, that was very good. And yeah, every I what I felt is, is that you were uh, it was like uh, the lightning pass the toolbox, and you were uh, straightening out all the tools. Mm. And so I was making a note of each tool that you expressed. And then it started to make sense. There's all these different tools to use that, that you've come across and that you're sharing. And so uh, it just gave me a lot more ease around it that, oh, okay, now I see. And I see where the path is really, the, the moons each month mm -hmm. and the annual temple. And that's really kind of the path we're following as a group. Right. But then there's all these other tools available in there. So it was very well presented and very clear. Well, and uh, I enjoyed it. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. It, it tired me out, that, that presentation. Uh, as Barbara picked up on, <laughs> my energy just kind of was winding down, down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad for this feedback because I thought, oh God. But you know, no, I, no. I gave it, him a uh, bit, it was very calm and very uh, meditative. Mm. We could put it that way. <laughs> yeah, very nice. It's but it, nice to you see were it. you were ex you were explaining each each tool, mm. and it was very very well laid out, and then brought us to the present moment. Right. And, um, yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, I, that's what I felt. I was just listening to your book about nice. what it is you have to offer. Right on. Yeah. Now you also, um, you read through the article or the, the posting I did about the, the Y Center. 
and the yeah the muluk and the yeah. Buddha's inside. I yeah. mean, here Please. we are. We're finding this Buddhist uh, connection, uh, and and the Mayan connection. You know, that's that's a very interesting uh, juncture, as far as I'm concerned. And mm -hmm. the whole uh, the geographical proximity. I mean, when we think of uh, going out from from Mesoamerica into the the Pacific. You know, it seems entirely uh, possible to me that the Mayan, the Mayans visited Kauai you know, way back when, and maybe they mm -hmm. looked for their uh, knowledge here. You know, it, I, I found a real resonance between these sacred structures I've experienced here and what I experienced in in Mesoamerica, in Guatemala, and in, in in Mexico, and that in itself is a very intriguing connection, as far as I'm concerned. But what mm -hmm. is really exciting for me with this um, Lawai Center is that it's it's designed as an international convergence point for all religions, all spiritual paths. It's got this mm -hmm. really universal vibe to it. And I thought, well, uh, you know, seeing these little altars with the hieroglyph of the month mm -hmm. there, I mean, how could it be more graphic? You know, it's there. We go from the 2D drawing of the glyph to a 3D uh, and maybe 4D <laughs> representation of the same qualities of experience. So that to me is is kind of exciting in terms of the future. Like I, I, I'm seeing this, what they've done there is they've built a temple that's basically a cube. And it's this, mm -hmm. it's the, the emptiness at the center of that cube that's really where the action is. <laughs> that's the present moment kind of thing and to have that um in miniature in your in a little altar i'm going to build one back in spence's bridge for our home you know for mm -hmm. outside in the backyard it just felt like well this is a natural way to to connect here and you know we have over this distance you know um just holding that vibe you know like there's a vibrational quality to this whole um, this whole center and yeah, I want to I want to help it grow and 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 just be a part of it. And uh, so that's that's something I'll be doing. <laughs> so those look like all those little gateways or little doorways mm -hmm. into the. They look like little cooties coot where individual monks would meditate. Exactly. And inside were different. Uh, deities meditating yeah most of the deities were representations of of the buddha mm -hmm. so so what i got was that this is like there's the unity which is held by the temple the the, the hall of compassion as they call it and then all the each individual little um altar is like a, the diversity factor you've got 88 altars the same structure but there's a different presence, a personality presence, kind of in each one, mm -hmm. and uh, which is kind mm -hmm. of like a signal to, yeah, we're everybody's the Buddha, <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, and here we gather together, you know, we we sustain the vibe of the the qualities of life that the, the Buddha yeah. represents. So. Yeah, we just have to knock the mud off. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's very universal, and that's what I like. Uh, over the the Christmas holiday, Sophie and I usually do a Vipassana retreat of ten day. Right. But we haven't been going to the centers because of the the COVID, and so we did a self course on the twentieth till New Year's Eve. Oh, beautiful. And so we had a self course here at home, and that was right on. That was wonderful. And then we shared watching the discourse together at night. And it's uh, Vipassana is another universal, it's the technique that's universal. I mean, there's right. no religion, yeah, it's just the, just the technique. And, 
I remember going to the Dama Hall and you look and there's just all, every type of per person there. Yeah. And you're learning it from, uh, yeah, from monks and there's Catholic nuns and all just variety of people learning the technique. So it's a very universal technique to alleviate the suffering. So then when I'm on that path, I'm going, okay, so what's this lightning path? And that's what I was assessing through the website and okay, so where do I start? And now it's it's getting clearer and clearer. Yeah. There's lots of lots of tools to play with. So for an example, uh, with the sun now um, and the Hunab Ku and this galactic cosmic connection, I look at the sun differently than before. So when I enjoy the warmth of the sun standing there and I go from my solar plexus and connect to the sun and say, okay, just give me information from the other stars that are connected to, to the sun. Right on. And uh, it's just a whole different sensation. And uh, to receive uh, galactic messages, whatever they might be. Right on. Yeah, I like that in your presentation where you showed the yellow sub and that the the rudder is that uh, connection to the Hunab Ku. Right on. <laughs> so that's where I feel I'm along for the ride to feel that connection. And seeing that pattern that pattern of the, the shh, shh. and then seeing that in all the, you know, you're talking about how this energy shows up in different civilizations or cultures, and then to see it on all the, the Navajo rugs and mm -hmm. all those patterns. Mm -hmm. Just It's all that interconnectedness of the of the light consciousness. I, could I comment on that? Yeah. Of yeah. One of the um, Little forays we had, we went out and we went into a little town that had a thrift shop. It didn't open till two, and we we waited at the gate, <laughs> a whole crowd of us, you know, and flooded in, you know, <laughs> and uh, it was really a great little thrift store. And I'm digging around in the back. I'm in this really narrow slot, and there's books on one side and something else on the other side, and it was like really tight. And I dropped down and I pulled out a book and it was How to Survive 2012. <laughs> <laughs> and it had the image on the front of the Egyptian um, deity Acker that Steve, you and I have, that's got like the two lines facing outward, mm -hmm. red circle. So it was like, oh, this is in range of what, you know, this synchronicity moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. So, okay, I'll, I'll take that one. And then I drop down further, and up I come with 
an auto or a biography this thick of of Madame Blavatsky. Mm -hmm. oh. Are you all familiar with? No. Yeah, her wow. seances. Yeah. Oh man, she. I mean, she is the one of the most incredible people I've ever encountered. And uh, yeah. the, the the secret doctrine that, that book. Have you? No. Yes. Okay. No. Well, she was talking about the sort of things we're talking about now. She's talking about in the eighteen hundreds, and she was <laughs> a force of yeah you know, the future coming forth and and just you know completely outrageous figure and traveled extensively and all through Europe and Asia and and up into Tibet and got teachings you know everywhere she went. So she was this incredible repository. She was the seed woman. She had all this knowledge condensed into her her being, and then she went about, you know, trying to dispense it. And she started the Theosophical Society. You've probably, everybody's probably heard of the yeah, Theosophical Society. And she had she came up against tremendous resistance from the church and from everywhere else because she was a truth teller, like just mm -hmm. telling it like it is way back then. And they were they were out to get her. Well. She's talking about certain things that were, like you just talked, you know, about the light mm -hmm. and con connecting through your solar plexus and all of this mm -hmm. familiar stuff for her, you know, way back then. So here I am. This is my <laughs> I'm working my butt <laughs> way through, but it just seems like such a gift to come at this time. I've been I've known of her. I had the secret doctrine back in the 70s, but it was like the languaging was just so different. I, I didn't mm -hmm. orbit like I, I would now. And uh, so, yeah, another very interesting presence that has showed up you know, on this particular journey, you know. She, uh, just seeing what she went through, uh, I, she has a, astrologically, she has a, a mystic rectangle, it's called, which I have as well. So that's an, a, a kind of a, a resonance that I feel with her. And uh, reading this biography is kind of filling in some of the, the pieces that I haven't you know, been able to in the past. So, mm. so yeah, another rich element in the <laughs> journey. <laughs> That's so funny. I hear Madame Blavatsky, and I'll, the only time I've heard of her is uh, attending Stuart Wilde's course. He, he talked a bit about her, and then he'd say, he'd imitate her voice and go, is anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> he was a real trickster. Yeah, sounds like yeah. that's good. Yeah, well, so you had that uh, Egyptian connection. So when I'm watching, listening to your video, uh, there's one moment where you talk about the Sphinx looking to the east on the grid, on the horizontal. Yeah. And then the, the vertical galactic core. And I've had the Sphinx, we've talked about that earlier, and it's showing up more in uh, in poems and uh, like W.B. Yeats, in his poem, The Second Coming. Mm -hmm. And then he, he talks about slouching towards Bethlehem. And that, in essence, he saw after the First World War that how things are falling apart. And so there was kind of this theme of watching things kind of fall apart as we know them, the structures structures mm -hmm. and uh, so I uh, when I was kind of recovering and I took a an online course about uh, Hemingway and his writing and I just really liked his way he can describe something his description so that led to uh, Joan Didion, who was a writer that wrote in the style of Hemingway. 
in this very matter of fact, and she's from the silent generation, so the generation before the boomers. And she's observing the 60s from that point of view, as opposed to, uh, so she's seeing things falling apart as the boomers are kind of seeing a new new beginning. And, uh, and the title of her, one of her essay books is uh, Slouching Towards Bethlehem. Mm. And she has the poem in there. And so I'm seeing this name of Yeats and also Keat, Keats, the, the British poet. Oh, yeah. And somewhere, and I don't know where it is, that's where I'm at right at the moment going, wait a minute, I've heard either it's Keats or Yeats has something to do in the astrology realm or with the Sabian symbols, but now I'm not finding that name at the moment. So I didn't know if anybody's familiar where, if I saw it with uh, Arguez explaining it or something, or his contribution to the, I, his contribution to the Sabian symbols, but I'm not certain. So I don't know if anybody has any well, you, you would have encountered Yeats with the Phases of the Moon book. Okay, that's where it is. Yeah. Okay. Because he came up with the 28 portraits, one for each phase of the moon. <clears throat> okay. So, for example, you and I have the, exactly the same phase, phase five. Right. And so there's a particular uh, portraiture that's to, appropriate to us, and it's got the... Uh, the light and the dark to deal with that. that check back into that. Uh, yeah, that's the um, the waxing crescent then. Yes. If it's at five, yeah. And you and I are like within a degree difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's kinda, laughs> you know, they, you just got to, yeah, <laughs> appreciate the mathematics thing. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, when I'm feeling this calling or this, that it's that, then it's obviously Yeats is in this poem and it's in this book and it's calling me towards. You're slouching. What, it's getting me to slouch towards, uh, <laughs> towards that book. <laughs> Your assignment. Slo yeah, I'll slouch towards the book, yeah. Oh, well, that's it. Thank you. Just in the last, you know, day, I was kind of going, where is that coming from? Mm -hmm. So you passed it. Could be part of my Irish Irish heritage. Then, <laughs> are you are you passing the baton in this moment? To for further conversation, or are you, you have. Yeah, I'll pass the baton. Okay. You mean? Yeah. In case are you asking if I if, can I stop talking? Or? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm wondering: are, are you pausing or are you? Uh, <laughs> <ready> to... <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm just here. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we don't want this to just be Dwayne and Steve talking. Yeah, the Dwayne and Steve show, right? <laughs> yeah. Have to Although that has a kind of a fun. Fun sound to it. Well, <laughs> we could bust into whole new territory. We're, so, we're suddenly we're taking this blowing our bugles a bit far. Well, you know, we do have a new moon uh, with the saving symbols, and at um, Capricorn twenty one, a relay race. No, oh. and the, so, well, then I am passing the baton. the keynote is uh, co cooperation within a group. Mm. Each of us takes responsibility for our own self mastery. Yeah. That wow. Great line. Wow. Well, well, I, hey, well, I could. I've used up my forty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the i the. Uh, I'm just jumping in because it's a relay relay. Right on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, go. I'm gonna mute go. myself. And oh, am I? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think I had myself muted. So sorry, Steve, maybe I was making noise on your, but I don't, I don't have, um, 
a lot to add on along that way. I just I just enjoy listening to the talk, and I and I get I get images and the things you you mention and whatnot, and and it just there's 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 feelings that go along along with that. And I as you guys talk about symbols and details and stuff, it's my aspect of <laughs> completely the other side of that. It's like what <laughs> I uh, I just sometimes feel like I'm just a ball of energy that just <laughs> wants to uh, sort of explode or sometimes it implodes <laughs> kind of thing. And uh, it's exploding right in this moment. So hang on, you guys. <laughs> it's like, Buckle up. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, lightning path does have meaning to me as far as kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. You've been having kabooms for years. <laughs> I, I I know, and and uh, there's that aspect to me. I think, well, it's like, well, no, I guess I just have to accept myself and just carry on. I'll just carry on kabooming. <laughs> I uh, I'm I haven't uh, I didn't I haven't taken time yet, Duane, to listen to the. Um, that video or the um, that you just put out that uh, Steve referred to. Yep. I will look forward to that. I will look forward to that because um, having what what Steve had said about it, I do look forward to that. So I don't have anything to contribute from that because I haven't listened to it. But I will look forward to listening to it when uh, when this race is over. <laughs> so I um. I'll I'll just throw the baton to somebody else right now because I need to breathe for a minute. I need to stop, take a breath. I've exploded. I'll I'll just kind of tamper it down for a little bit. So take it away, somebody else. <laughs> oh my goodness! Don't you get tired of me? <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> okay. Feels good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, somebody else better take over. I'm gonna, or I'm, I'll mute and let's <laughs> some big, let somebody else take over. I'll, I'll butt in okay. when I feel I have to. <laughs> okay. Here, here. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Um. I was listening to the video already and I liked it very much because uh, I can see uh, eagles everywhere now. It's like uh, this eagle energy, which is like, which you mentioned in the video is, is really rising. It's like this rising eagle. And this is like seeing things from a higher perspective. And I am in this, um, I'm very connected to the eagle. And I, I was, I had a vision once to, to sit in the head of an eagle looking out while, while he was flying. And it was, it was magical dream. It was a magical dream. Wow. And now it's activated. I can see eagles everywhere. What, whenever I see eagles, I say, aha. That's it. It's the connection. It's the synchronicity. And as I mentioned before, I told you about this Pierre Ravan, who is this um, this musician who's making really spaced out music. And just before I came on, I I also listened to an interview, and he's amazing how how out there his thinking is and this is what i also see connected with the with the with the eagle it's this far out vision and bringing it in and seeing it it's like you have to open up your third eye really and 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 um uh feel the action like almost sitting in an eagle and have this feeling of majestic energy being flying uh, higher than any any animal or any bird, it's really probably the the animal who flies the highest. 
And that's also getting disconnected with the nitty gritty thing which is happening underneath. So it's like also leaving the worldly affairs in a, in a way um, not, not uh, uh, concentrating in there and reacting to it. It's more like connecting with the higher self, with the higher visions, with the, the div uh, I would like to say divine energy, but even, you know, like space kind of time and cosmic time. Or Hunapku, as you, if you would like to say. So this is like what I feel, which is coming in, and it's coming in quite intense and beautiful. So synchronicity and and all these kind of things is very important to watch. And and I was never listening to any Pierre Ravan. I didn't even know who he is. But he's interesting. He makes his own perfume and he's like a real far out guy. <laughs> and I watched this rave, which he did in Goa. I mean, it's blasting. It's like he's really working with people, with groups, which is connecting again with your, you mentioned um, before, Dwayne. Mm -hmm. So his group activity and they're dancing with him and he's doing the DJ work. It's it's amazing. So I will um, post something in, in Facebook about him because I think he's a is a good, interesting uh, personality to see what he's do what he is doing, you know. And that's one part. And another thing with connecting to your video, I was missing one tool. <laughs> Yeah. And I was waiting and waiting until you uh, <laughs> mentioned all the tools, but yeah. you didn't mention composite sun. Oh, right. And I thought yeah. that was a real cool thing to do. Yeah. And um, I sort of was missing it. So um, I don't know. <laughs> but did you do it on purpose or? Didn't, or you forgot about it or because that was also very connecting um, but, and it was also like the traditional way of um, astrology and the Sabian symbols and the composite suns mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. in the Mayan style and I think um, it's it's um, it's um, yeah, it's like uh, not only me, it's like connecting with the other person, with the you. And yes. that's why I'm Libra. I probably I saw it because of that, because that's my theme yeah. of being in the other person or, uh, uh, you know, I'm another you or, or, or the other way around. <laughs> so it's like, um, it's a very beautiful way of, reconnecting with the others or with another person or this composite sun could also be done in a group we could do it in a with our group for example mm -hmm. and recollect maybe uh, how you you said it's done mm -hmm. because i forgot <laughs> I, I forgot how it's done but i did it and it, i thought it was great it, um, yeah i agree yeah. So. I think it's hard to me. I, I, I think it just it just didn't come up on my screen when I was composing. <laughs> no. and it has it does have its own video. I what I can't remember which number that is, but uh, the whole presentation I, was about the I, sun. So. And you told us all how how to to do the numbers and and everything the path. You know, you showed. It was a nice path into the direction of the other person and mm -hmm. feeling this connection between uh, people and and have a group spirit sort of uh, develop. So it's cool. I mean, it's cool for, for the future situations. We are going to maybe not only two people, like a group thing, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely.
yeah, I think we should keep that in mind for an, a future engagement. What do we have here? Hello, Shirley. Hello, hello. Am I late? Hello. Well, I guess hello. I could say that, but <laughs> we okay. we're just passing the baton around. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you showed up just in time. Great. <laughs> I'm just taking a break, so uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I have another call at uh, it's about four thirty, so I'm not sure how long I'm gonna stay. So, what's it? Yeah, welcome. Let let us know what you're up to. What's going on? Oh, uh, we have a lovely storm. This is day four, <laughs> stormed in, and. Uh, Yesterday, the last night, the wind came up, so it's really miserable today. And yeah. yeah, I went outside and I only did 15 minutes shoveling and came right back in. <laughs> Minus 22 and the wind's about 50, so Ooh. it's a little chillier today. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> I might get out by Monday, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah, that happened. Good time for inner work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Stoke Good the time. fire. And... <laughs> yeah. Reading, watching TV, playing with the cats. Yeah. <laughs> Sick, easy. Yeah. So we've been kind of taking a, a personal view on the, the lightning path. Do you have any, any anecdotes or any insights that you might like to share? Um, hmm. Think of the thousand people that are going to watch this video. And what message do you have for them? <laughs> I have been paying more attention to moonlight for whatever reason. And I'm finding that I really quite respond to the changes in the light and when it's a new moon i miss the bright light and then i'm really conscious of uh, how bright it is to sleep try and sleep when the moon is fuller so that it's that transitioning through the phases of light at night that i'm becoming more aware of in the last couple of months and and how um, the last full moon, I took pictures of the moon shadows in the middle of the night, oh, which is not something that I have particularly paid any attention to. So I'm thinking that things are slowly just creeping into, maybe I'll be conscious of it more. I don't know. Yeah. yeah just kind of open up a little bit, explore a little thing. Yeah. Yeah. But new, new moons are definitely powerful times to uh start things and and i always find the energy shifts are like oh I, they push give me a good push to keep going yeah yeah and circles at this time at new moon time a circle for me um really unleashes creativity more projects that keep adding up and more things so that's a change for me it's a change so i'm not i'm not quite getting it how are you you're relating to the circle of events that you um as i kind of become a more aware of moon energy then when i'm pulling when i'm drawing a circle to celebrate the new moon to call in that energy of the moon. And that's when I'm finding that for me, I'm getting a lot of creative um, information, creative projects and things to do come up for me. I know making sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. I'll listen today. Great. 
Well, it's, it's just got to be Sophia's turn. Hmm? It's got to be Sophia's turn to speak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I um, I think I'm going to go on that synchronicity of, of egos, what Barbara was talking about, because uh, um, knowing that this year is the ego year, and Steve and I, we were out one day walking, and we were just walking, and I said, there must be an ego somewhere here. I just got that sense, sense of the ego. And in a nanosecond, we look up and here it goes, just flying. And then Steve said, yeah, here it is. Here is your ego. Wow. So I think uh, living on the island, we are very much connected to, to the birds and the eagle and other animals. And uh, I think... Um, and I was uh, connecting to some of the Peruvian shaman. They talk about the condor. Yes. So, you know, it's uh, to me, uh, Barbara says, yeah, eagle is one of the birds which fly the highest. And I think condor is there, right there with, you know, like I think we call the eagle uh, or the condor as a North American eagle. So it is very, very fascinating. I feel... Uh, I feel the same energy as what Barbara are talking about is elevating consciousness and rising above and looking at different perspective and um, uh, kind of just as actually we call it the bird's eye view, you know, like really seeing a totally different perspective from that view of um connecting to the divine or connecting to higher consciousness or connecting to that higher energy. And um, I was yeah. listening yesterday to some of uh, my favorite astrologers and all of them talking about this very potent new moon today because of the portals and the stargate. And um, they, one of my favorite uh, astrologers, she always talks about the galactic family and so I, I kind of, sometimes I feel, okay, so this is a lightning path, galactic family. Now suddenly I listen to somebody else, the same, uh, the same topic comes, you know. So, um, and then you're talking about the uh, Buddhist center in Hawaii, and it just feels like all, all um, melting or merging together. And I feel that maybe. That is part of our uh, uh, coming together as a unity, like uniting, uniting, because it just seems like there is many different elements, and then there is a lot of overlapping. You know, like I find the Buddha mm -hmm. and the astrologers and the lunar cycle, and then I, one day I was looking at many different things, and I said, Everybody is going to saying the same thing, you know. Like we are going to like I was looking at uh, Nikola Tesla. I just got really interested in his how uh, he and his life. I didn't know the details about his life. I knew he struggled, and um, but then it was just amazing that he was playing with the lightning, you know, just like as we playing with. His, the lightning path, and then um, I find that now Steve, uh, you mentioned that Madame Blavatsky, and I know that she was one of the very pioneers people who actually so-called channeled, and how much she was judged by these uh, um, into her psychic power. So it is quite interesting to see that I am kind of finding that. The people who are on the front line, you know, like pioneer, like Rajar, and bringing in new elements and new ideas, are most of the time judged or not that welcomed because the existing establishment does not really understanding the novelty, you know. So I, I'm really feeling some very precious breakthrough, like some, we are on the edge, we are on the edge of breakthrough with 
our own consciousness breathing through the lightning path and at the same time embracing these other cultures and uh, really feeling that um, that unity and non-duality that's the bottom line really so there is not not um, uh, too much uh, to explore once a person really embrace and understand that principle that um, in the in the silence and in the stillness non-duality and then we you know when sometimes people say oh the oneness consciousness but of course it is oneness consciousness once you once you grab that idea that um, uh, we are actually resonating resonating on this heart heart uh, frequency then there is nothing else than love and i just really find that the the mayan really brought it in to to working through this central the, the central um heart connectedness the heart consciousness so i am excited i'm excited what's happening for the new year even I am hearing from some people that it's going to be still a bumpy year, but that's okay. We we are very resilient and we made it that far. And um, I know that we are all signed up for this journey. So I'm excited to see. And one of my friends said, well, Sophia, we're just going to meditate more. When it's going to get bumpy, then we're just going to sit down, be still, <laughs> Be quiet and meditate more. So I think where Shirley says that she is snowed in, that I feel, and I'm one of my friends just going up to northern Alberta, and uh, it's minus 40 there. And that's exactly what I said to her yesterday. I said, you will have an opportunity less meditation. And she said, yeah, you're right. It's, it's cold and dark, so it's a good opportunity to be still, um, and silence and experiencing that emptiness. So um, I am I'm excited for this new new year and to see where is this new consciousness taking us. That's it. Beautiful. Now before we leave you, Sophia, though. Yeah. Would you? You have a lovely rendition of the Hunab Kud on the wall there. And yes. the other art. Would you take us on a tour of your your room there? Show oh. us some of your artwork? Well, uh, yeah, I can. I can do that. I Are you on my computer. So I think you can see. Let me see. Let me stand up. So that behind me. That behind me is the part of the Buddha project, right. which is one of the panels. And this side, you see a couple of smaller art pieces. And I painted those for my art teaching and the little, little canvases. You know, every class has a little canvas to teach. Yeah. And uh, let me see, I just want to run that. And then I think here is the Hula Pu. And uh, that's just a, a, a very basic oil or I, I acrylic on canvas. And I, I painted that because I, I am mesmerized by the Huma Huma Pu. And uh, it's interesting that um, I put the hearts as a, as a frame, you know? So that's a, so yeah. I can bring it a little closer maybe. Oh, that's lovely.
Oh, no, I can't answer it. Maybe I know it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so that is a, that's a good answer. Good answer. Uh, I think that, that is about uh, come and see. Come and see. You know, like the Buddha always said, come and see. And um, that's kind of a very basic saying. And then I. Steve, I can show you a corner. This is Steve's corner here. Oh, beautiful. Fantastic. Uh, and you can see Steve Workbench. Nice. Yeah. That was our studio. The studio is with all the different, uh, different creativity and art, and yeah, just a fun, fun place to to live and create. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for that tour. That's yeah. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to say one more thing of Barbara said about uh, the music and the sound. I am very much um, uh, connected and feeling that the different music and different songs I am listening, it's really helping me to raise my consciousness. So I really feel that um, I call it as a sound therapy and one of my friends, we had a meeting and she was talking about that. She just feels that her whole life changed since she committed herself to some certain music. So I am I'm happy that you are sharing that, Barbara, because I think that's a, a very easy and fun way to raise our frequency. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I will post something in the group later on. That I will post the, the conversation they had. Like it's a spiritual conversation because he's also in the same meditation what I am doing. This Pierre Ravan. But then in the end of the he there's a ray, there's a music of him in the end, and there's also an eagle there. So mm. I will post so you can check check it out. Wait right on. <laughs> okay. Now, can I ask a question about uh, a composite sun? Like when you somebody mentioned about it'd be interesting the group composite sun is that uh, i'm not i even missed the um the our get together when you talked about composite and how to do it so i i, I would have to go back and find that for myself but duane what do you is it a would you be able to do that or is it a long process or to find our composite sun for us for this group at this point or I think we already have, I know uh, Steve and Sophia have, like we, and I, I got some kind of guidance that said, here, use this image and do the composites, <laughs> arrange them according to this this uh, glyph. I think it was a um, crop circle image or something. I can't remember. Oh yeah, from the it's crop circle. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of, the composite sun that Steve and I have, that Sophia and I have, that uh, Barbara and I have. So I'm, mm. I'm wondering why. Yeah. Maybe we, we well, I guess yeah. we haven't done yours. Um, but we'll get, we can do that. I, and we'll, uh, we'll explore that. You and I can have a one to one. This, this whole moon cycle now, we're in, we're in two oak. So it's really a great time to pay attention to your one-to-one -one relationships especially and uh 
so the composite sun, as Barbara's saying, like it's a really, it's a very vital um, sig symbolic uh, representation of the purpose of that relationship. So uh, it can be really exciting to explore. Yeah, but I remember. I I will try it out. <laughs> so I'll, and yeah, so I'll set that up. It'd be nice to connect with you, Duane, and a one on one for that for us. That that'd be great. I'd like that. Yeah. 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 Kids. So yeah, uh, maybe just to look ahead to this oak, oak moon. I just did the, I sketched out some of the, the, the keynotes for the glyph from the, the Mayan Oracle. Now we've got, because this is what we're moving into. So I'm just sensitized to these particular qualities. Uh, path, friends, balance. Dream weaver, total immersion, spiritual strength, recasting the past, always an interesting journey, guardians and guides, companions of destiny, emotional body issues, and fulfillment of wishes. That's a good swirl. <laughs> I know in, in my own inner work, I you know, once I at new moon I, I tend to draw in, you know, what are the what are the qualities that are emphasized at this time? And I, you know, study up and I do my, my natal chart and I see where within that chart is is this new moon. And so that's kind of my my feed in and then I just let it go. And then as the moon cycle, as we move into the cycle, I just, it's like a little, little arrow comes up, says, hey, pay attention, here's keyword, <laughs> back to new moon, you know, and it, it's, a, it's a way of kind of keeping with the flow of the, of the feathered serpent. <laughs> we're all on this wave, you know, moving through, and, uh, it's a vibratory phenomenon, so. What is it? Uh, raise your vibe, find your tribe, something like that. <laughs> we're we're a tribal phenomenon already, so it's just you know, are we vibing together, and you know, can, can we support each other? I certainly certainly feel supported by you guys from that little seed idea way back when. You know, we've uh, we've hung together for a good stretch here. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, in your uh, presentation, uh, you in the Sabian symbols, uh, I noticed you showed a birth chart or a chart, and I saw my name on it in the presentation. I go, I don't know if I have that chart. And I think it was uh, you were talking about uh, James Burgess and his. So maybe you, you I, were I, showing I, how to well, how to get it how to get it from there from his site. You're wondering how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how you got that chart? It looked great, and it had my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, I had asked you at the time if I could use your chart as an example. Yeah. No. I agreed. I I know that. And um, I don't know if I printed that off from the software program that I have on my old computer, which mm -hmm. I don't have. But, um, but um, as far as going to Burgess' his, his site, uh, it's a great experience if you want to explore the, the savings because you put in your your data, your birth chart data. And it will spit out uh, the, the saving symbol for each of the planets and 
the North Node and so on. And so it's all right there. It doesn't right. actually. And I think I think that's what you shared, and then you sh you shared how to do it in your presentation. I yeah, but see. I didn't I didn't show a, a chart generated by you know, you know, like the birth chart. That that was from different software. So. Oh, okay. It's not from him. No, not that. Particular. Okay, because I thought that I would generate it myself. Well, if you if you do the um, the what is it astroseek dot com yeah so that's where you'll get they'll they'll print out a chart or they'll present a chart for printing um, and there's different chart styles and as I've emphasized there you want to go with the one that um, is the zero Aries I think. Is. Mm -hmm. And we're all on the same page. But that was me, you know, saying, okay, now if we if we all get our charts in a row, uh, there's a whole lot we can explore here. Mm -hmm. But you're going to go back to your your basic natal birth chart starting point. That's the center of the mandala, and there's all the information is there. And then we just start, you know, exploring that, and it'll come mm -hmm. from the composite sun is a pretty great one. Because mm -hmm. then we bring in the Sabian symbols as well. Uh, for the degree and uh, you know, Barbara and I get the pyramid and the Sphinx and uh, I mean we're we're always when we get together one and one it's always about you know <laughs> we're talking this morning about the Rishat structure in Atlantis and you know that's just that's just who we are as a as a mm -hmm. diet and, uh, it's, yeah it's really fun to explore that. So yeah, maybe uh, um, we could call like for next month, you know, maybe we do a, a session where we all bring our natal chart to the table and uh, and just kind of take it from there, see what we can do. Yeah, that sounds fun. Be uh, spontaneous and open-ended. And... All heaven could break loose. <laughs> Yeah. I I like that. I'm in. Right I'm in. Well, having to break this, yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I don't read charts at all, so I have no idea what's online. I actually have a copy, but <laughs> oh, good. Great. Yeah. Great. Oh, this is good. This is good. <laughs> uh, it's really wonderful what we're we're pioneering, you know, and. And as you're saying, Sophia, I mean, it's it's busting out all over the place. I'm I'm getting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, astrologically, it's it's got a lot to do with this Neptune, for inching its way up to the first degree of Aries. You know, it's starting a whole big new cycle. We're in that seed portion of the cycle where all things Neptunian are coming to the fore. I mean, Neptune is all about. Uh, vision it's about expanded capacities you know, intuitive capacity dreams visions you know uh, music all of the, the explosion well i mean we're talking about it here it's uh, it's on the up and up and i'm gonna be more and more and along with that comes confusion you know? i mean too much data you know? can't handle all that <laughs> And what and what is really? Eh? I mean, you you see things. I, I watched a, a, a video the other night, a Bitcoin phenomena, where these guys had um, they took they used images from um, our everyday use, you know, and like and like the representation of Giza, you know, they would put that on a page, and then they'd bring in other information and. and and so that it looked like you were interfacing with a legitimate company and you're going to, you know, use your, your bank card and everything's going to flow along just fine. Well, these guys had nothing behind what they were doing. It was all that initial image. So it's, it, this is the Union kind of era that we're in. We got to be very, very vigilant mm -hmm. because there are people out there <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's true in in every era, because when you had your your bag of gold on the stagecoach, you had to be leery of the thieves, right? Yeah. 
and those thieves get into, I mean, it's in any, any area. There's always those people that aren't living from an ethical life. And uh, that's, a person just needs to be aware of that. Yeah, yeah the vigilance. Mm -hmm. Factor. And they're doing the same with the, with the internet, or as you say, those false fronts. And uh, what's real? What's real, exactly. Mm -hmm. Then you're talking about Saturn and, and, and uh, that uh, the order of Saturn and the, the freedom of Uranus. And I also go, you know, Saturn's not going to fall out of the sky, as far as we know. So it's it's always going to be there. So there's always this order, and it, it's how how do I function with these uh, Saturn things going on, and now Pluto moving into Aquarius, on January twentieth. <laughs> there's another big event this month. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And that's start of that Pluto in the Aquarian age. But, uh, yeah. How to function in the dysfunctional world. I think that's what uh, I'm certainly feeling that. I think that that's what uh, that's what happens to me. The overwhelm or the energetic of things that are just so expansive and so big, and there's so much happening, and it's uh, I guess for me that uh, that's how it, that's how it affects me. Um, I I don't have either the strength or the discipline or whatever it is to to kind of. To, to ground it or to sort of be with it or hold on to myself or hold on to my center or whatever because mm -hmm. it's just it's just <laughs> it's just the energy that's just <laughs> and uh, I I guess if I were to equate it to we we all kind of brought in our uh, uh, our 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 sign or whatever and so I think I think I'm a legit <laughs> I'm legitimately <laughs> of the um, the Kowak, the lightning path, the thunder beings. I, I think I really, I really resonate with that. It really feels like, okay, yep, that's what I came in with, or that's what I'm dealing with. And mm -hmm. That's that's okay. <laughs> mm. yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and how does it serve you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I appreciate. Yeah. The 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 question then Steve or whatever it's like it's um because I it feels like it's so it's not contained I just don't mm -hmm. feel contained you know and um so I, I sometimes take that into a negative aspect mm. like but but I guess in some ways like it's quite wonderful like mm -hmm. I'm not contained I'm just <laughs> so I'm all over this like it just feels like I'm everywhere mm -hmm. and um and I guess just to be okay with that, like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, I don't know if that's serving me or not. I don't know if that answers that question, but uh, yeah. Well, I think when Dwayne talked about Uranus and the, the, the sudden transformations, like the sudden or the lightning or suddenly something comes to you, that sounds like a lot of insights or possibilities or creativity can come in a you know the flash of lightning it it yeah it feel yeah it feels like the um the 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 energy it's so strong or it's so mm -hmm. that it, it can be uh, dis, uh, disruptive even like i can be on this doing this project or working on this and then bang like that that's over and i have to go you know, and I have to go for a walk or whatever and come back. I, I mean, it's just, it's just that, yeah, that, um, yeah. How do you ground? How do you ground the lightning bolt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, need a, you need a lightning rod. <laughs> well, as, 
as, as being a member of that uh, Thunder, they were a cow act. Mm -hmm. I find that's where my journaling comes in. It really helps me grow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so yeah. A lot of those, you know, what's come, what's, what's disrupting, um, it's very, what, what's the word? It's, I mean, it's, it's active in many different ways. So unless I can catch a thread and bring it down, <laughs> concretize something from this experience uh you know it's just it's just gone and mm -hmm. it's waste you know <laughs> you're gonna go through all that disruption might as well come out with something i can work with you know? mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah that sounds like that serves you it really does mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. then being able to go back like i just since i've been here you know i've been back to the beginning and what's happening and I'm realizing that you know, this is really working me over. This whole item, mm -hmm. it's really, yeah. It's, it's been fun journaling, <laughs> mm -hmm. and all of the photos, you know. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, it's that's one of my... those tools, tools to use. I journaled through your whole presentation. <laughs> oh, good. Just, just getting all the things from it going, okay, I want to know. Oh, I see. You start off in the first two minutes, you express all the tools pretty pretty much. I go, oh, okay, this is going to be about the tools. And then wow. every time you mentioned a new tool, then I gave it a certain marking. Okay. Here's another tool in the path. Oh. Here's a, another tool. And so I see that's why it felt like you were uh, kind of rearranging the toolbox or putting the tools in order. Right on. It probably just ties in with my me straightening my carving tools. Yeah, know. exactly. Same sort of thing. Keeping the keeping the Learning how to keep the tools sharp. So that's been a big thing for me in the last month is starting that uh, wood carving course. And playing with wood and learning. I've, I've had this love with wood and right on. now it's uh, a course that's really fun in creating, uh, creating a puppet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, that's my creativity for starting out with this uh, this eagle view. And uh, what, a, what a creative bunch, my goodness. Yeah. That's another thing around the world, and they're all coming from kindness and caring, and wow, it's uh, wonderful. Again, it's like Sophia says, there's all these different groups, but they're all doing these wonderful, kind things. And it's just all coming, coming, showing up more and more. It's, I think with that, the darkness has really reared its head and people see it now. Because I think it was hidden for a long time. And so if there's a blessing, I think it's shown up this darkness and people are saying, oh, oh, that's what it is. Uh, I think I'll choose something else. <laughs> yeah, it's all about choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, as was mentioned, we want to play in the light. Be the light. Play in the light, be the light, and, but be aware of the darkness. And don't put that, don't put money into that uh, fake screen <laughs> in the computer.
And then there's other people I've noticed, the people that, uh, you know, that there's those call centers that get people to give their credit card. And, but there's hackers that get into the call center and, and call them on it <laughs> and break them up. So that's happening too. Like, you know, there's a, uh, the bad guys, but the bad guys are being exposed. So that darkness, light is being shown on. I think that's pretty cool. So we need lots of lightning. Watch what you ask for. <laughs> Careful, Steve. Oh, it's okay. We need lots of lightning to light up all that darkness. This is maybe an aside, maybe, but and and it's probably you all know of. What are your thoughts on the med med beds? I'm sure you've all heard of med beds. Med beds. Yeah, med med bed, like a technology that um, synchronizes, gets you, it gets. Uh, it's way too complex for me to even try to explain anything about it. But uh, it, 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 it's sitting yeah, medical, in a field. It's called the medical bed. Medical bed. Med medical beds. bed. Yeah. Med yeah, bed. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So you've heard you've heard of those. I haven't. That, yeah. No? I know. I know some about it, but again, yeah. <clears throat> Doctor, it's such I, a new. A new yeah, technology, new, new thing. So I will be cautious, you know, like just cautious with these new right. things. Yeah. So just yeah. research I, it from many different areas and then okay. come to some conclusion from those researches because I, <clears throat> I like new things, but at the same time, I am always a little bit skeptical. So I am very cautious of. Of uh, researching my topic, yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I agree with that. I I had just listened to a or a video, seen and listened to uh, a doctor Sandra Michaels, who uh, talks of this or is is instrumental, I guess, in bringing about this technology. And I mean, listening to her, and I mean her her knowledge and and. And how she explains it all, and how she talks, just comes across so, like so, so authentic, and she's so it's to me so so real. And this this technology, um, there was an interview that the fellow was Jason Skurka, Skurka, an interviewed interviewed Dr. Sandra Michaels, which was wonderful. And then there's a video where he explains it all in more layman's terms. And uh, I, I just, I was, I was definitely, I'll keep going back and back and back and listening to it because it just is, the more I listen to it, the more it makes, it makes sense. But it's quite, um, qu I don't know, just because uh, she worked with scientists or whatnot in NASA and I mean, her credentials are just on and on and on. And uh and it, she brings in Tesla, uh, his his work, Tesla's work. This is part of. Um, uh, anyway, I can. Uh, it, if anybody's interested, I can put those names in the in the chat if you want to look at. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm just super impressed with, because she even goes into the the. the um, chromosomes and your cells and everything where I mean we all know we're we're we all know we're we're light beings or we're just energy or vibration but uh, the way she explains it that uh, uh, somehow I was able to get it more like it's it's if you're if you get your body in alignment to for, for total healing that it, the cells the cells are the light like the cells right. yeah and anyway uh, i won't go on i can just babble without really making a lot of sense 
Um, I was just curious. If it, mm -hmm. <laughs> if it sounds know. like you're almost convinced. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you if you listen if you listen to Bruce Lipton, you know he is a scientist, and this whole idea that our DNA our DNA is changing, so that's this kind of ideas happening in the last fifteen years. And I show you, I have a book, um, my biological medicine book, and. Uh, um, and uh, so there is uh, this gentleman. This gentleman talks about it about 20, 25, 30 years ago. And now we have Alberto Violdo, our Peruvian shaman, talking about grow a new body. So there is uh, definitely a uh, consciousness about the, the light light in our cell a light in our dna and uh, the whole brain and neuro, neuro like the whole neuroscience is just about 10 years old you know so we are really entering to a, a very new territory and that's the reason i'm saying i'm interested i'm looking at i'm studying it a little bit but um kind of uh, say, okay, then let's, let's look at what is this about, you know, because it's uh, electricity, you know, like me being a, a, a TCM practitioner, I always understood the principle that we are connected to the cosmic forces, you know, like that is the cosmic light. So now I am seeing that, you know, the ancients, you know, the ancients who sat in their caves, they knew that, but they didn't have the language to explain it. You know? They just said, oh, we are connected to the cosmic energy. And then we left it on that way. But now I am kind of studying with some Taoist monks, and they say, we always knew that. You know, it's just never been exposed. So now it's becoming exposed that we are Things, the cell is light and the DNA is changing and, it, and, and the whole chemistry of our density is changing. So it's a, that is the whole part of this uh, Aquarian age we entering that our dense, dense physical body becoming the light. Yeah. So that's, that's all what I know so far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. It it all makes sense. That... You know, studying and st studying with these ancient um, uh, monks, you know, and they were sitting sitting in the cave for years and years and years and downloading all of this information, but they kept it in secret. So it was a special, special knowledge just for a special, uh, small part of the society. Even TCM, like just normal acupuncture treatment, was a, a, a secret for a long, long time. So this idea that we have so-called Chinese medicine school, that just came out in the last hundred years. You know, like this idea that we can actually manipulate the, or influence the chi, the energy in our body with different things that just got revealed in the last hundred years. So this we are as uh, as uh, Dwayne said we are on this threshold or breakthrough of learning totally new dimension. Yeah, you can tell I'm excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Homo luminous. Homo luminous, yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Barbara, you had your hand up there for a moment. Uh, is there something? Oh, you... it was something related to um, Atlantis, because Atlantis also had this uh, med kind of. When I saw 
some uh, pictures or visions, there were like chambers where they had people put in into like a, 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 a med bed and colors would come and all kinds of, you know, you would uh, stay in there to rebalance the, the person who needed that, you know. And uh, some kind of people like priests or, or in our case, doctors, but in that time, priests, they would pull out these people who, when they were charged or when they were balanced or whatever, you know. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. But also, also I um, here on the islands, they're, they're making this um, coffee trips where they sell blankets and stuff to the people. So this med beds is also like, uh, and they're talking, 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 and they're in NASA and they're in like, um, and they're they're studied such and such, but it's all lies. So you have to because they just want to have some something mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Trip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the tourists and they buy a blanket and they, they get it sent to their house and it's a, a blanket which is like uh you know, but these guys, they were lying. I felt so embarrassed because mm. I was certainly part in the same place. And I was saying, my God, he is lying. He's so lying that the, 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 yeah, yeah, it was like incredible, you know. He was an alcoholic, but he was, he said he studied in Harvard and did such and such, you know. He has degrees of such and such. So he was lying. They were lying. And I felt so, horrible to be in this group of people but I learned how to do business with them they were my teachers in a way because <laughs> extreme, extreme. <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but they told me how I can sell my art so I had to they were really forcing me and say no you have to insist until they buy you know and so mm. you, you, never, you can do whatever yeah. The hard just sell. <laughs> you sign it and put some money down. So this is how I learned. That mm. was my train. <laughs> my train in, uh, in money business, in business, making business. And I saw them. It was like disgusting. And they were eating cake and uh, coffee with it. And yeah, people were in a good mood to open up and buy it. And it, it sounded fantastic, you know. He would always come back and say, oh, was I good? Was I really good? Was I convincing? Yes, he was convincing because he saw everybody signing in and buying that. You know? That's how you do business. Hmm. Yeah, sounds like a timeshare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, received, <laughs> we, we received a blanket once in Mexico. <laughs> Because we went to a timeshare presentation and they got so mad at us that we wouldn't sign. They threw the blanket at us and they gave us a bottle of tequila and said, okay, you're not staying in a timeshare, just go lay on the beach. <laughs> so we received a blanket. We received a free blanket. And a bottle of tequila. And tequila, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it was worth it was worth the three hours. <laughs> beach is much better than a timeshare anyway. <laughs> Laying on the beach with a bottle of tequila. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's a missing piece for my beach experience yet. So I guess I'm going to have to stock up. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> yeah, they offered the free gift. If you could stand it, <laughs> you could stay to the end. Yeah. Take, take the abuse. Yeah. I guess... I guess it wouldn't be tequila over there, Dwayne. You'd be doing a what a mai tai or, or what's what would the drink in the, over there you'd be taken to the beach.
speech. I was, li- I was listening. <laughs> yeah, there's the reason. Just two days ago, we went to this really special restaurant in, uh, restaurant in Monolay Bay called Tahiti Nui, and they serve a tequila-based drink called Beach Bomb. And we both had one. I had one. No, it's Beach Bomb. So we did have one. We had Mai Tais at another restaurant a, a week or so ago, and Mai Tais are made with rum. And I think we both agreed that the tequila based beach bum drink was even better. Better, even mm. better. Yeah. I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> Your timing was perfect. We actually, we actually do occasionally have tequila. The problem with tequila is it feels so damn good that you want another one. Yeah, that's the problem. And you gotta yeah. know when not to get another one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, bye-bye. Excellent, right. excellent. Well done, Teresa. Great. <laughs> yeah, the tequila journey. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of tequila, go back to Guachimontones, our whole beer <laughs> journey, right near the town of tequila. Right. <laughs> Which reminds me to ask you once again, Steve, that you had a friend down there, so, and and some. Yeah, stuff. they they never made it over, and oh. uh, now they're now they're back in uh, in Canada. Okay. Yeah. I thought for sure yeah. you guys were learning Spanish, so we could do a tour down there. You could be the tour mm-hmm. guide. Yeah, we're learning Spanish. That's just to uh, keep things pliable. <laughs> But I've I've had many uh, a year to actually physically go to that site. Just just yeah, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. And we're talk- talking about thieves and danger. <laughs> that's that's nearby too. That's near, yeah, absolutely. But I've seen photos of the pyramids and then a circle of people um, gathered in ceremony right at that site and so on. So it's, well, it's somebody working the working the, the pyramids here. <laughs> Interesting to see what they're actually coming up with. Thank you. Yeah, I'd have to go with the super group. What's that? Safety in numbers. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Well, here we are, the Companions of Destiny, right here. Yeah, we've got, we've got a contingent. <laughs> we both have to book a flight down there and then meet there. Yeah. And... <laughs> Let's hook up there and have tequila on, on the yeah. on... Yeah. <laughs> De- Definitely, tequila on the beach. <laughs> on the montones. Um, Montones. Machi Montones. Machi Montones. So, guys, I see we're coming up to a two mm-hmm. hour. Any final statements? I could just like ask about when you mentioned about next time. Are we each to like just have with us our 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 birth charts, our chart, yeah, the astro- astrological chart. Start from yeah. Yep. And ideally, that would be a chart for zero Aries at the house. Oh, okay. So we do that for zero Aries. That would keep us all in the same same framework. Not sure if I understand that, but I guess I will have to check that out. So that's kind of in the chart style. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in, instead of like a, a placidus, or, yep. it'll be a zero degrees Aries yeah. style. Chart style. That's the chart style. I don't know if Astro Deans does that one. I'll have to check. Yeah, I'm not sure on that either. But you use Ast- AstroSeq? Yeah. Okay. You just use that site. Yeah. Astro AstroSeq. 
-hmm. That's astro-peak.com. Dot com. Okay. Okay. And then, and then get the chart style would be zero Aries. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you don't see zero Aries, they may have it under a different name. Under may, what? Under a different name. Uh, it might be whole, whole house or whatever. Get what the other ones use. It's not. It's not tropical. Oh, it won't be tropical or any of those. Um, but we can, you know, if check we, it out. We, have trouble, we, we, we can do it all during the mission. You know, we yeah. have an example to how to, yeah. well, as to how to how to find that information. Yeah. Okay. No. No child left behind. No child. So that's going to be on February the 9th. Just one couple of days prior, you guys flying back. That's right. And your your birth, birth date is on the 11th? Third. Mm -hmm. Birth date is on the third. The third? Yeah, third of February. Third of February? February 3rd. We meet on the 9th, and Dwayne flies in on the 11th. Then you fly back on the 11th. Okay. So we got all that birthday stuff out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> back to the frigid north. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then have an awesome month. Enjoy yeah. your last month. One more month in Hawaii. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy yeah. your Christmas lights. February, yes. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yep. Thanks for the. It feels like we're, uh, we're we're using the tool. Right on. Oh, Start to use the tools. So Great. again, thank you, thank you for that wonderful presentation. I feel a lot, a lot of uh, ease. So thank you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Look forward to having a go at that. Yes. Right on. Love you. Hey, Bye -bye. Guys. Love you okay. Too. See you guys. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.